from Apogee Electronics with ESV TV to talk about the new Symphony IO Mark II. Symphony IO Mark II is the most intuitive, the most modular, and the best sounding interface that Apogee's ever developed. And we're going to dive into those details to show you a little bit more of the new Symphony IO Mark II. The first new feature about the Symphony IO Mark II is its new chassis. In the new chassis, we have an uh, intuitive 4.3 inch TFT touchscreen display. This allows you to get to all of the different elements of your interface directly from the front panel. Here we have the main screen. This shows you your headphone output, your speaker output. You can easily control it with the singular control knob here. If you want to mute, you can just hit the button there to mute all of your outputs. There's also, if you swipe from left to right, you can get into your individual screens for each section of the interface. This next one here is the monitor section. So you can switch your stereo speaker sets from multiple speakers, or 5.1, even 7.1. If you have a 16 by 16, we even support 9.1 immersive audio, which is Sennheiser's new standard for 9.1 surround sound. But all of that can be controlled from the front panel here. Moving on, you can get into the input stage where you can control the mic pre gains if you have the mic pre card installed and select your individual channels to control high pass filter, phase inversion, soft limit, or any of your other functions that you would want to control on the front panel. The next screen is output level. You can actually calibrate the interface itself from this touch screen display. So no more reaching behind racks and uh, adjusting things with screwdrivers manually. You can do all of your calibration directly from the front screen. So if you're calibrating to a large format console or any other sorts of outboard gear, you can do so here. You also have a, a view of what's going on with the device itself in the settings screen. Here we can look at fan speed, the internal temperature, and the audio interface mode that you've selected. This is uh, super easy to switch through. You can also adjust all of your different display parameters, including display brightness and your firmware versions. So that's just a quick overview of the intuitive user interface on the touch panel of Symphony IO Mark II. Symphony IO Mark II has an entirely redesigned chassis. We know that some customers are keeping these inside of their control rooms, so we wanted to minimize noise while also keeping in mind that temperature control in an interface is extremely important. So what we did is we actually put uh, an air intake on the front of the interface as well as here on the side so that cold air can come in through the front of the rack and there's an extremely quiet fan on the back that expels the hot air out the back. Now this fan only turns on in instances where the unit uh, senses that it gets hot. And so, like you can see now, the fan's not turned on and uh, we're, we're in a, a normal studio setting. So under most settings, uh, the fan system will not engage. But when it does, it does so very efficiently and very quietly. So this is one of the, the great new features of, of the new chassis on the Symphony IO Mark II. The headphone output of the new Symphony IO Mark II draws from the technology in the Apogee Groove, which is constant current drive technology, meaning you can plug in extremely high impedance headphones and drive them with incredible power. This is actually the best headphone amplifier that Apogee's ever designed. So be able to drive super low impedance regular headphones or really high impedance headphones like a Sennheiser HD800 for example with great power and great clarity. So it's a, a great way to check on your mix. Symphony IO Mark II is the most modular audio interface that Apogee's ever designed. We have modularity both in the IO section as well as the interfacing section. Symphony IO Mark II is available in three versions, Thunderbolt, Pro Tools HD, and later on this year, we'll have the Wave Sound Grid Ethernet protocol available. This uh, version that we have here is the Thunderbolt version. It's built right into the chassis. But we have this option card slot that would allow us to add a Pro Tools HD option card or a Wave Sound Grid option card, and uh, hopefully some more option cards uh, may be available in the future as well. So this is a truly future-proof interface as far as interface connectivity. The modularity also expands to the I.O. section of the device. So here we have an 8x8 with an 8 mic preamp card. These are the same size module cards that we have in the original Symphony I.O. So if you already have a Symphony I.O., you can use those modules in the new Mark II chassis if you wish. But this allows us to expand from as little as two inputs, six outputs with the 2x6, 
all the way up to 32 by 32 with 16 channels per module slot in the new Symphony I.O. Mark II. Symphony I.O. Mark II is the best sounding interface that Apogee's ever developed. The new 8x8 and 16x16 module cards have an entirely new input section with what we call dual sum ADC. This is where we actually have two chipsets per channel of input, which leads to greater dynamic range and lower noise. These new 8x8 and 16x16 cards have the highest dynamic range and the lowest noise of any converter Apogee's ever developed in our 30 year history. They sound absolutely amazing and outperform all other audio converters that we've measured to date. Symphony I.O. Mark II, like all Apogee interfaces, has extremely deep Logic Pro 10 integration. You can actually control the mic preamp controls from the channel strip inside of Logic. This works both on the Logic window on a Mac or from Logic Remote on the iPad. So here you can select phantom power, high pass filter, phase inversion, and your mic pregain. So you can walk around the studio, be in different parts, maybe while you're checking drum sounds or in a vocal booth, and control all of your interface parameters from Logic Pro Remote on the iPad. This deep logic integration also goes into the driver that's built into uh, Symphony I.O. Mark II and that it's designed to work perfectly with core audio. So not just in Logic Pro 10, but in any DAW that you'd have on the Mac, Symphony I.O. Mark II is designed to perform with the lowest CPU usage and uh, the most efficient processing power for your machine. Symphony I.O. Mark II is available in four base configurations. The 2x6, which has two analog inputs, six analog outputs, and an assortment of ADAT and AES digital inputs. There's also the 8x8 card, which is eight analog inputs, eight analog outputs, and the choice of an additional eight channels over ADAT or AES. And then there's the 16x16 16 16 card, which has, of course, 16 analog inputs, 16 analog outputs. Also the choice to use SPDIF on two of those channels, if you'd like. And then the final configuration is the 8x8 with the 8 mic pre card, which is an 8x8 module in the bottom slot, and then Apogee's tech award winning 8 mic pre module in the top slot. That gives you 8 channels of microphone preamps with 85 dB of gain and extremely low noise. So if you want a bit different sound and with your mic pre's and you want to maybe audition the Apogee mic pre's versus some outboard mic pre's, it's a great option uh, to expand your system as well. So those are the four base configurations. You can also expand on those. So if you start with an 8x8, you can always purchase a second module in the future to expand to a 16 channel system. Or if you start with a 16x16, 16 16, you can expand with an additional 8x8 or an additional 16x16. 16 16. So Symphony IO is so modular that it can grow with your studio as you add more channels or as you adapt to a different type of setup. Symphony IO's Thunderbolt version is the extremely low latency version of the Symphony IO Mark II. The latency spec is 1.35 milliseconds at 96K, 32-bit. This allows you to run things like plugins in your session while you're monitoring in extremely low latency. The Thunderbolt connection is also extremely CPU efficient and uses Apogee's DMA engine or direct memory access that bypasses uh, portions of your motherboard so that you're actually writing your recordings directly to memory. Makes it extremely CPU efficient and uh, really well embedded with the core audio system on your Mac. The Pro Tools HD version of Symphony I.O. Mark II has a mini DigiLink connector on the back. This will connect to any sort of Pro Tools HD setup, whether it's an HDX PCI card, HD native Thunderbolt, HD native PCI, or even older TDM based systems. You can plug it into your existing Pro Tools rig. You can also use it in line with other Pro Tools converters as well. So if you're daisy chaining multiple converters together, you can use Symphony I.O. as your flagship converter with some others uh, from Avid as well. So it's just a, another great feature of the Pro Tools HD version of Symphony I.O. Symphony I.O. Mark II is available now, so head over to eastwoodsoundandvision.com to check out all the details.